Oh, just sprayed my face. Lovely. Ready for the club. All right, so I am a little bit jet lagged. I landed back from Hawaii last night at like 1 a.m. Before that, I was in London. Now I'm back in Seattle for a few days and then I go to San Diego. So I figured today would be the perfect day to do a massive makeover on myself, a glam transformation in about an hour. I'm gonna do my makeup and my hair and we're just gonna go all out and have fun with the makeup today to get from this to this. So if you enjoy this video while you're watching, you can give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, I upload every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 6 p.m. Central time. All right, so this is actually all my hair now. I took out the extensions before Hawaii. I just didn't want to deal with them in the water and everything, and I feel like a new woman. It feels so light, and my hair actually is way thicker than it was. I've been off Amavig, so that probably helped a lot. So my hair is kind of like almost back to its normal thickness, so that's exciting, and it's getting pretty long again, but we're gonna do the hair after I do my makeup, so I'm just gonna tie up my hair real quick. Wow, that's an intense bun. Okay, we gotta go down a little. There we go. The link this robe down below is super cheap. It was from, I think, Romway or something. I'll leave it down below. So I took a body shower this morning, but because I just washed my hair yesterday, I did not wash it. So I've already moisturized my face using my La Roche-Posay. And then I'm just going to go in with this Imani primer. It's the Perfect 10 Primer Serum. I don't know. I've been trying it out. Not sure how I feel about it so far. It's I haven't noticed like any miracles or anything, but I want to keep testing it. So I'm just going to apply this all over. It has a really nice like fresh scent. I probably should pluck my eyebrows, but that sounds like a project right now. You feel me? So as that's soaking in, I'm going to go in with my Smashbox Primer Water. Give us a shake. This just adds a really pretty glow, especially if I'm using more like matte foundations over top. This just really helps out if you have dry skin. So I recently did a review on the Givenchy Tint Couture Everywhere, the new foundation from them, and I really like this foundation, but the shade was way too off for me, so I did order the lighter shade, P100, which is this one. As you can see, it's actually a little bit darker, and the undertone is really off for me, so I'm going to be returning this shade. I've tried it once, and it was just way off. So P115 is closer. It's still too dark. So I'm actually going to try mixing today P115 with the L'Oreal in 400. I haven't tried this yet. I haven't tried mixing this one at all yet. I've just been wearing it on its own because I've had self-tanner on. Hawaii was amazing. I feel like it was a true vacation. Like, I did check emails and stuff, but I wasn't editing. I tried to, like, really disconnect. I wasn't reading YouTube comments or anything, and it was just, it was great. It was much needed. I'm also really excited for this video because I haven't worn, like, a full face of makeup in a hot minute. I think I did my makeup fully one time between London and Hawaii, so it just feels really good to be filming again, doing my makeup. I've had everything pre-filmed, so I haven't actually sat down to film in like a couple weeks. I did get a ring light shipped to San Diego, so I'm going to be filming at my parents' house while I'm there. So I'll be in San Diego for about a week, dog sitting, the world's cutest dog. I think this is the most freckles I've had on my face in a long time, like a couple years. My face gets super freckly if I'm like fully out in the sun going to the beach and stuff, which we were every day. But when I was a kid, I had like dark full-on freckles. I kind of like them now. I hated them as a kid. I think anyone who grew up with freckles, now with like the whole freckle faux freckle trend thing, it's just like kind of hilarious. Like I used to despise my freckles and people used to always comment on them and now people voluntarily put them on their face. It's kind of hilarious. I'm just taking the leftover foundation and pressing it on with my dry LA girl sponge. Because I do want to just cover up some of the freckles and scarring because I want this to be like super glam full coverage. I'm just going to go in with a, a dut, a dut, where am I going with that word? A dab, a touch, a dutch, who knows? I'm going to go with a drop of the number seven in porcelain. Actually, let me shake this. These are awesome for mixing in or if you just want to add like a tiny bit of coverage over what you already have on, you need like the smallest amount of this. So I'm just going to drop a touch of that right here. That just really helps to add a bit more coverage without putting on like a full layer or a thick kind of concealer. For concealer, I'm going in with an oldie but a goodie, the Maybelline Fit Me in the shade 15. I've been really loving this concealer again. This is the concealer that I've been using most the past few weeks, just on its own. I do like letting it sit there for a minute just to get like the best coverage. I get good coverage with this under eye concealer, but when I put my powders on, it does increase as horribly as some other concealers on my under eyes. Since this is full glam, I think I am gonna highlight the center of my face, which I usually don't do just because I feel like sometimes it can look a little bit creepy on my forehead, but let's do it today. I'm feeling wild. 
So I've been testing this powder, the new Makeup Forever. It's actually a powder foundation. As you guys know, I really like using powder foundations for face powder because it just adds a little bit of coverage. If it looks good, like if the finish doesn't look too heavy as a powder foundation, then why not use it? So I've been really enjoying this one for setting my makeup. I have tried it once on its own. I still need to play around with it. I feel like I can't get a perfect shade match in this powder, so it's just a little bit tricky to use on its own for me, but this one's in the shade Y215. This is just a little sponge thing it comes with. So I'm actually just gonna mix these two powders for my under eyes and then I'm gonna use this one to set my face. The Makeup Forever powder is matte, but it has a really pretty, almost like blurring kind of finish to it. It's not super full coverage though, like it doesn't have nearly as much coverage as the J-Cat powder. It gives a really pretty, almost like blurred kind of look under there. So going in with the same powder, I'm just gonna set my cheek area with this. Again, to add a little bit of coverage right there. As you can see, now the scarring and freckles are like fully covered up right there. And this just makes it easier to blend stuff on top when I put on my powder bronzer and everything because it's just going on top of the powder. If you have dry skin, try just targeted powdering. You don't have to powder your entire face. Like I usually leave right here without powder because that's what looks best on my skin. I have been enjoying though, the more matte look lately. Guys, I think I have to trim my nose hair right now. I see one hair coming out. <laughs> Full glam, you know? Listen, some women don't have to do this. Some got a lot of hair, it's life. Okay, I'm really liking the base right now. And I feel like with this powder in those certain areas, it just kind of like tied everything together. It looks really nice and soft now, so I'm feeling this. The love of my life lately has been this bronzer by Bare Minerals. It's in the shade Faux Tan. I've been reaching for this almost every single day. It is beautiful. Oh, just realized I didn't do brows. Guess we're doing that afterwards. Oh, it's just the perfect tone where it gives you that tanned look, but it's not orangey. I did recently do a video comparing a bunch of shades of bronzers and talking about a few of my favorites and also kind of like a review of the Fenty bronzer. All right, so I'm gonna do my best for brows today, work with what we got, because I definitely need to do some plucking. But I first go in with my Milk Makeup Brow Gel just to kind of get the depth there with the color, and then I'm gonna shape it with a pencil. I'm gonna use the Sigma Brow Pencil in the shade Dark. I don't know where the heck my handheld mirror went. Where are you? Oh my God, the hair situation is out of control today. So I just kind of follow the shape of my brows since I have them microbladed, I just add a little bit more and kind of like clean up that line. I'm gonna prime my eyes using my MAC Soft Ochre Paint Pot. I cleaned all my brushes before I left, so this one is like super fresh, doesn't have 10,000 layers of paint pot in it, which is always nice, you know? So this is a new palette that I'm gonna try out from LA Girl, it's the Hot Hot Heat Eyeshadow Palette. It is very, uh, it's nice like plastic hard packaging. Here's the inside. I'm kind of feeling like a coppery gold smoky eye kind of look. So I think that's where, so I think I'm gonna definitely, so I think I'm definitely, whoa, whoa. But I'm gonna start out by taking this shade. I'm just gonna put that into the crease. I also, in the shower this morning, just tried the Peter Thomas Roth, actually I have the box right here, the Pumpkin Enzyme Mask, which has super good reviews on Sephora. It's supposed to be like a resurfacer, AHA kind of thing. I only leave it on for three to seven minutes. It did make my face feel super smooth. I also love the Ordinary AHA peeling solution or whatever it's called. I'll link that one down below too, but that one is super affordable. So I'm not sure if the Peter Thomas Roth one is quite worth the price. I think it's like 60 bucks. I'm so excited to put false lashes on today. I feel like I haven't worn false lashes in a hot minute. I'm gonna go in with this guy. This is the E45 Sigma Tapered. I'm gonna pop that right into the crease. I want like a super intense, smoky kind of look today. Kind of bringing that around as well. Then without anything on it, I'm just gonna take this brush. This is the Japanesque something, 724. And just lightly blend out those edges. Ho. Leashitsies, look at that copper shade. So I'm gonna first take this on my finger, press it onto my lid, and then I'll probably use a brush to get it exactly where I want it. Okay, that's pretty. Like that is not wet or anything. I'm gonna go back in with that first shade again, this one on the tapered brush, and I'm just gonna place that a little bit above 
just to bring back some of that warmth up there. This thing I haven't tried by Koki, but I wanna give it a go today because it looks like a really pretty like rose gold kind of liquid eyeshadow. It's the Crystal Fusion in the shade Polaris. It almost has a little bit of like purple. Sometimes if you keep going over these kind of eyeshadows, it almost removes it. So I'm gonna let that dry right there and then I'm gonna blend out the edges. There's actually this pinky shimmery shade, which I think would be really pretty to kind of blend the copper with that thing I just put on by Kogi and just pat that to melt those two together. So far I'm liking the LA Girl palette. I do need a black though since I want to get this super smoky. So there's no black in here. There is like a deep brown purple shade, but I want a true black. So I'm just going to take this black in the Morphe 35M palette. Any black you have will do. I just find that Morphe blacks are usually the best. They're like super pigmented. They don't blend away. So I'm pressing this on, but I'm almost gonna drag it in a diagonal on my eye shape. I feel like when I do a smoky eye, that's the most kind of flattering on my eye shape. I also don't like to bring the black too high up because then it just looks a little bit crazy on my eye shape. I almost just like to make like a smoked out kind of wing look. And then I think I am gonna go in with this shade back in the LA Girl palette. Using that same brush, I'm just gonna kind of blend out that black a little bit and fade it into the pinky rose gold. If you get any kind of fallout, this brush is awesome for picking it up. It's a Sigma F15. I'm gonna pop a black liner on my waterline. This one's by LA Girl. My favorite one by them is the Glide On Gel Pencil, so that's one I'm gonna link down below. This is just the one I have. Going back in with the black eyeshadow in the Morphe palette, I'm gonna press that right underneath my lashes, just kind of stamping it on to create almost like a liner look under there. Then I'm gonna add something to blend that black out. Same brush, I'm gonna go back in with the deepest brown shade in the LA Girl palette. Just bringing that a tiny bit below the black, not too far down so we don't look like a raccoon situation. Then I'm gonna take this brown in the corner and blend that out. I just realized I'm going in a totally different order than I normally do, so what happens when you don't do makeup for two weeks. I forgot my blush and my highlight, so we're gonna do that in a second. I'm actually gonna take the highlighting palette that I'm gonna use on my face for the inner corner of my eye. So this is the BH Cosmetics Spotlight Palette. I just wanted like a really intense highlighter today, and this is the one that came to mind. I haven't used this in a while either. This is nice because one, it's super affordable. Two, you get six giant pans in here, and you have a good assortment of color too. So I'm actually gonna take the shade Vivid, which is this pinky one. And to open up the eye, I'm gonna press this underneath right here, kind of melting it into my inner corner, and that just makes such a difference. You look more awake. This highlighting palette is so freaking pretty. All right, so we're just hopping all over the place today. Before I finish off my eyes, I'm gonna go in for my blush and highlight. So I'm gonna take this Catrice blush. This is such a beautiful blush. It's in the shade Glistening Pink. The shade of this blush reminds me almost of like a MAC blush. You know how there's just like something to MAC blushes that look super flattering on the face. This is just, it gives you that look. Comment down below. Are you a blush person or are you a no blush person? I go back and forth. Some days I haven't been wearing blush at all lately. I've just been liking the like bronzer only look. Okay, now highlight time. So we're going back in with the BH palette. I think I'm gonna take a combo of Vivid and Glow today. And like I said, this is a intense highlight. This is not going to be like a subtle highlight, but that's what I'm going for today. Whatever is left over on the brush, I'm just going to run on the tip of my nose and then also on my cubist bow. So I'm going with my Physicians Format Eye Booster. I'm going in with pretty intense lashes, so I'm actually not sure if I want to do a full wing. I'm kind of just running this along my lash line. Before falsies, I'm going to go in with a thin coat of mascara just to coat my natural lashes so when you put on false lashes, you can't see them coming through. I haven't changed my mic battery in a while, so I feel like it's gonna die any day now, so I've checked it like five million times to make sure we are still good, we're still recording. Okay, so my lashes are on, I use the Rude Cosmetics Audacious Lashes, and I just put some mascara on my lower, lower, lower lashes. I feel like if you're trying to look real glam, you gotta do the lashes. It just takes your whole look to the next level. For lips, I'm gonna take the Maybelline 110 Purely Nude Liner. Now I'm gonna go over that with CoverGirl Toasted. This is the Melting Pout Vinyl Wow. Vinyl Vow? Vinyl Vow. So this I've worn a couple times and it is so freaking pretty. When I first saw this, I thought there was no way I was gonna be into this just because there's a ton of glitter in it, but 
there's something about the way it sits on your lips. It just gives you that like pouty, really pretty glassy lip kind of look. This is the Patrick Ta. She's an influencer lip gloss and there's a few shades of this but this one's my favorite and it has a really nice minty feel to it and smell. You can't totally see the glitter on your lips like it doesn't look like a chunky glitter once it's on your lips. It just gives you that really plump super pretty glossy kind of look. I'm in love. All right, so now I'm gonna turn on this bad boy to get the hair going. This is my flat iron by Bombay. I've used this for, man, I think like four years now. This is my holy grail go-to flat iron because I can curl it too and curl my hair with this too. It heats up super fast, literally in like under a minute and it just works really well for me. So I already have a hair oil in. It's my Briogeo Rose Hip Blend Oil last night. So I'm not gonna put another oil in right now. I'm just gonna kind of part it to where I want to style it. I am going to use this really cool kind of like plumping powder that I picked up in London at Boots. I've been really liking it. It doesn't make your hair feel dirty, which is rare. It's the Batiste XXL plumping powder. So a lot of these plumping powders give your hair this like super gritty, gross, dirty feel where you just feel like you have to wash your hair. So this one you can use on like freshly cleaned hair and it's not going to make your hair feel really nasty. I'm not sure where you can find this in the US. I don't know if Ulta carries it. Like I said, I picked it up in the UK, but I'm just going to tap a little bit. Leave it on there for a second. Do the same thing on this side. And then just run my fingers through it. Because thick hair, or if you have more hair, it's a lot harder to hold a tease than thin hair. Usually, if I want to get any kind of volume at the root, I'll have to use some kind of plumping powder. Or I really like the... Uh, what is it, the IGK in the pink bottle, that dry shampoo is really good for adding volume. It does have a little bit of grit to it because you need that to hold your hair, but it's not super sticky, gross feeling to me. Okay, so basically with my hair, when I'm doing this kind of style, I start at the front, I run through one time to flatten it. Oops, we are... that will fail. My flat iron just totally knocked over my mic. How are we gonna do this? Lots of cords happening. Okay, let's see if that works. As I was saying, I will run through it one time to flatten it, and then I'll run through it again to curl it. And I just do one twist, and then leave out the end, and you get a curl. So after I go in and curl it, then I'm gonna like foof it out with my fingers. But this is just the quickest way for me when I have freshly washed hair like this, where it's frizzy and it needs to be kind of straightened but I also want it curled at the same time. Instead of going in with like flat iron and a curling iron, you can just do one step. Starting in the front is easier for me. I also don't like sectioning it off. I don't know, just personal preference. And I can do my whole head in about 10 to 15 minutes. I also have done this so many times now that it's just really quick and easy. So if you're trying this, it might take a little bit longer at the beginning, but you wanna curl away from your face, especially in the front. Once you get to these back pieces, you can kind of do both, like change direction. If you're gonna be doing this, you just wanna make sure whatever straightener you're using has rounded edges like this or else you're gonna get like a weird crimp to your hair. So this piece, I'm gonna go towards my face just to switch it up. It almost creates just more of like a tousled kind of look because then your curls aren't sticking together because they're not all going the same direction. Okay, so here's the before and after of the not done side, halfway done side. Like I said, I just let the curls kind of set before I go in with my fingers and more product. But that took about literally three or four minutes to do this half of my hair. Depending on if you're right or left-handed, one side will probably be easier for you to do than the other side. Like this side of my head always turns out a little bit different than the other side. All right, so now that all the pieces are curled, I'm gonna go back in with my fingers and just kind of like rough up the roots a little bit. Then I'm gonna put everything forward and basically just run my fingers through it and kind of comb it out. And then I'll just touch up any pieces I feel like I need to, like I wanna start the curl a little bit higher to match this side. All right, so like I said, I put an oil on last night, so I'm not gonna add anything. Today I'm just gonna use some hairspray. This is the Living Proof. It's my favorite hairspray ever. Oh, just sprayed my face, lovely. I feel like this adds a little bit of volume to my hair too, which is nice. It doesn't give you like a crispy feel. It makes my style last a really long time. And then if I feel like I need any extra shine, 
I'll go with the IGK Speechless as a dry oil spray. So it's nice if you want the shine, but you don't want to go like overboard with the oil. So I'm just going to add the tiniest bit just to give it a little bit of extra shine. All right, so this is the final look. I'm just going to put some clothes on and call it a day, but it felt so good to just like fully get ready for the first time in a while. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, you can give it a thumbs up. I'm gonna have all the products I used on my face and my hair listed down below in the description box. So let me know if you guys would wanna see like a 30 minute transformation video or something. I just did a five minute makeup routine that was like super natural and just kind of glowy and fresh. So let me know if you wanted to see me do like a 15 minute glam video and try and just go like super fast or something. I don't know. Let me know if you wanna see any of those down below. But I love you guys. Thanks for watching. See you in my next video. Bye. Thank you.